All right, welcome to the last session of the MLE lecture. And here I'm just going to talk about a couple of uh, test procedures for the parameters in the model or restrictions on parameters in your model. So this is really the types of tests you can use when you have a finely specified statistically adequate model and you're trying to do your uh, tests that are related to essentially the reason why you started the project to begin with, perhaps. Um, but this is not really so much specification tests, although although you could use them to ask questions about whether you know ancillary variables belong in the model. Uh, there's there's three basic um, kinds over and above simply taking advantage of the asymptotic properties of the estimator itself. So one is the likelihood ratio test, and you I will just simply define the ratio lambda to be the ratio of the likelihood under the restricted model uh, relative to the likelihood under the unrestricted model. What that means is you're going to run the analysis without placing any restrictions on your parameters, and then you will calculate the likelihood of that model, and then you will run it again, only this time with the restrictions in place. So let's say, for example, a particular parameter, you want to test whether it is zero or not. Well, then you could run the model with all parameters being estimated and then run the model again where you uh, have the parameter that you suppose to be zero as set to zero. It's a constrained estimation and therefore you're just estimating the other parameters. And you take the ratio of the likelihood of those two models. Negative two, the log of that likelihood has a chi-square distribution with degrees of freedom being the number of restrictions. This will turn out if you look Closely is the same as the deviance test that we've talked about. So this is the first one, the likelihood ratio test. It requires estimating both models. So if you have programmed your own likelihood and your uh, estimation procedure takes quite a while to estimate, well, you're going to have to estimate it twice. Uh, one with the full uh, parameterization and the second one with the restrictions in place in order to do a likelihood ratio test. Another test called the Wald test, or the Wald, based on the Wald statistic, is the one that Stata will by default report. So when you run a maximum likelihood estimation, and it gives you all of the variables in its table and then all of the uh, uh, statistical tests of each of the parameters. Essentially, it's providing a Wald test for each parameter being zero. And how this works is you have your uh, constraints as a function of the parameters equal to some vector of constant. So it might be the case that you only have one constraint, and that is that parameter 2 is equal to 0. All right, so you're going to test whether the second parameter is actually 0 or not. Uh, but you can have a whole set of, of um, constraints being simultaneously uh, tested here as a joint test. You can have parameter 1 equal to parameter 3 plus 4 equal to 6 and parameter 8 equal to, you know, negative 2 if you want to. They give you three constraints. So you express the constraints as a uh, function of uh, basically a, some linear combination of, of the uh, parameters is the typical way and uh, the constants that they should equal to. The wall, and so this is, this would be a vector of the number of constraints. It would be the, you know, number of constraints you know, by uh, one, I guess, yeah. So, so this is a, a vector with the constraints in it. So the wall statistic is that vector transposed times the variance, which is, by the delta method, is the derivative of the constraint uh, matrix times the variance of the uh, parameter estimates, estimator, times the derivative vector again transposed. Take the inverse and that'll give you the variance of the constrained set of equations times the constraints again. So essentially the constraint vector, its variance inverse and the constraint vector again evaluated at the unconstrained parameter values. This is statistic has a chi-square distribution, degrees of freedom equal to the number of restrictions. What's important about this task is that it only requires you to estimate the unconstrained model. Okay? 
So unlike the likelihood ratio test where you have to estimate both the unconstrained model and the restricted model, this one you simply um, estimate the unconstrained model and then you essentially ask the question, how likely is it that the function of the parameters is equal to the set of constants that you think that they should be, is really what you're saying. So this is the Wald test. The third test is called the score test or the Lagrange multiplier test. And its statistic is take the derivative of the log likelihood function, that vector, and transpose, multiply, multiply it by the inverse of the information matrix and times the derivative matrix again, evaluating that at the restricted vector. I'll tell you what that is in a minute. But that statistic asks, will have a chi-squared with degrees of freedom equal to the number of restraints again. So let's suppose that a model has three parameters, theta 1, theta 2, theta 3. And I wish to test theta 2 is equal to 0. So that's the constraint I'm considering, is theta 2 equal to 0. Well, what I will do is I'll estimate the model with the constraint of theta 2 equal to 0. So in other words, I'm only estimating two parameters, theta 1 and theta 3. Theta 2 is set to be 0, so Theta won't be searching around to find a value. It's, it's, it's fixed to 0, so it's really a model of two parameters, Theta 1 and Theta 3. So my restricted parameter vector is my estimate for Theta 1, 0, and my estimate for Theta 3. So if you take S and evaluate it at that vector, then that's going to be chi-squared degrees of freedom 1 because I have one constraint, so that's my degrees of freedom. So that's the score test. The advantage of the score test is it only requires estimating the restricted model. You don't have to estimate the full model. This is not as common as the Wald statistic, um, in part because the restricted model is really only useful for testing that value. You, you don't get estimates and therefore confidence intervals about the restricted parameters. And so in that case, um, you kind of have less information um, from the estimation itself. On the other hand, there are occasions where it's very difficult to estimate a, a unconstrained model, but easy to estimate a, or easier to estimate a restricted model. And so you can use the score test to be able to, to uh, test your, uh, your hypothesis without having to estimate the fully unconstrained model. So what about the three of them? Well, the Wald and the score tests require essentially the asymptotic idea that uh, um, the estimator minus the actual value divided by the standard deviation is asymptotically normal, which it is asymptotically. But the approximation gets worse as this departs from it in, in smaller samples. The Lagrange test requires that there exists some function such that a function of theta minus the function of theta hat minus the function of theta divided by its uh, standard deviation uh, is normal. And you don't need to know the function. So essentially, in this regard, the likelihood ratio test is more robust in this sense. The, 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 the departures from this asymptotic uh, distribution um, really depend on if there exists a function where this would be the case. So it's possible that where theta hat minus theta over the um, standard deviation is not getting close to a normal, but there exists some function that would be, then the likelihood ratio test is likely to be more accurate than the Wald and the score functions. So from that perspective, there's a great advantage to the likelihood ratio test. The disadvantage is you have to estimate both the constrained and the unconstrained models, whereas the other two you do not, right? The Wald statistic needs to be based on the, the estimation of the unconstrained model, and the score statistic is based on estimation of the constrained model only. Now, as your samples are of finite size and as they get small, then the question that 
these uh, distributions are uh, valid or even just that the parameters themselves are asymptotically normal as is, is uh, presumed by the uh, arguments of their asymptotic properties, you can use bootstrapping to check this. So as I had mentioned before in the bootstrapping strategy, you bootstrap the data and you get a set of estimates for each bootstrap sample, and that'll give you some distribution of bootstrapped estimated values. You can use this distribution to check bias. And you can use this distribution to check for normality. Uh, this is important in the sense of normality because if you're going to use the wall statistic or the score statistic, you're presuming uh, normality. Now here, it's better not to really be checking this. It's better to be checking the um, standardized quantity and see if that is converged to normal because that's going to be the basis of your test. And the reason is, is you might find that theta hat, as evidenced by your bootstrapping, is fairly normal. And yet the quantity that you're going to base your wall statistic on is not having the proper coverage. And that is because of this term right here. The asymptotics are based on a theta hat, the theta knot, and then it's based on the actual variance or the standard deviation. We don't have that. What we have for our statistic is we put in a consistent estimator for that. And the question becomes, you know, we've been talking about how this converges. The question becomes, has this estimator converged sufficiently close to that one to make this quantity uh, normal. And that may not be the case. So you might be able to use bootstrapping to show that, hey, the, the, the um, maximum likelihood estimator itself is nice and normal, even though I seem to not be drawing a very good normal there. Um, but when you create um, the bootstrapping using the variance estimate as well, you might find out that that is not yet normal. And if that's the case, that's the one that's going to drive the inaccuracy of your test. So the key is, is we will in this class be using bootstrapping where we can in order to check uh, the uh, results in terms of their distribution. And if they're not normal, we can then use um, the uh, uh, properties of the bootstrap distribution, whether just use it for the variance. And so we assume it's normal, but we don't like our variance estimator. We can use the bootstrap variance estimator. Or we can use the actual uh, bootstrap distribution to come up with our tests and confidence intervals. So <clears throat> um, I say that uh, where possible, because some of our likelihood functions <coughs> will be fairly complex, and it might actually take you know, 10, 15 minutes in order to estimate one time. We can use that with wall statistics and such straightforward. But if we're going to bootstrap, we would need, let's say, 100 samples. Well, it's 100 times 15 minutes it's going to take to generate um, that distribution. If you want to bootstrap 500, then it's going to be 500 uh, times that uh, uh, 15 minutes or 20 minutes or whatever it takes to do one estimation. So depending on how complex the estimation is and how computationally intense it is, it may not be feasible to actually use bootstrap to check it. And that's an unfortunate situation, but sometimes you know, you're stuck with what what you've got, it'll depend on your computer, computer speed, and the complexity of the model. So this ends the maximum likelihood lecture.